Is there anything more satisfying than that sweet musical chime that hits each and every time that you pop a video game achievement or trophy? It's like a firm pat on the back by the developers themselves saying, jeez, I can't believe that you did X. Well done there, mate. That's going on the fridge. And them actually meaning it. And from a gameplay perspective, the concept of rewarding players in such fashion has actually got quite a knock-on effect. No longer could you just claim to have beaten God himself on Tekken, as now it was a simple case of calling out those playground liars with a let's just see your trophy list then. However, before you pull out your roster of rewards, maybe you should have a quick scour to make sure that there aren't any blemishes you'd rather stay hidden. As sometimes video game developers just love to use the medium of achievements to mock the ever-loving hell out of their players. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video game achievements you don't want to get. Number 10. 20 Straight Losses – Dead or Alive 4 as the name suggests, this is not exactly the achievement you'd want emblazoned on your gamer profile if you like your fighting games. For some reason, the Team Ninja developers included this in the almighty Dead or Alive 4 trophy roster and acted as a kind of public shaming for those unable to land hits or cut the mustard online. I mean, come on guys, wasn't it enough to embarrass most of your audience with those extreme beach volleyball games? And now you've got to add this to the mix as well! Online sections of fighting games are a shark tank in their most tame of versions, so imagine if somebody caught wind of you having this on your profile. It'd be like somebody throwing salt in your eyes after kicking your ass, well, 20 times. Maybe it's time to hang up the gloves. Number 9. Who Throws a Shoe? GoldenEye Source As many of us well know, in the glory days of the N64, there was only one true cartridge king, and that was GoldenEye 64. Developers Rare managed to reinvent the wheel with this title, offering a delicious adaptation of the film in question and delivering a multiplayer suite so chock full of content and replayability that it brought a tear of joy to the eyes of our collective childhoods. However, and I have to say this with a heavy heart, it's not aged all that well when it comes to the control scheme, yet before you burn me alive, there's actually a brilliant way to carry on playing this beloved FPS classic with better controls and smoother graphics thanks to the wondrous minds behind GoldenEye Source. This is the entire game remade in Valve's Source engine, and honestly, it's phenomenal. It even includes the ability to play as Oddjob, which if you're familiar with the game, would cause groan amongst your mates if anyone actually picked him. You see, he was much smaller than the other players, meaning that he was harder to hit, giving you a huge advantage. However, if you manage to pick Oddjob and come in last place on a multiplayer match in GoldenEye Source, you'd net the achievement Who Throws a Shoe, poking fun at your lack of skill despite your huge advantage and being a charming reference to Austin Powers. Number 8. The Feckless Warhammer Online Now normally, it's not an achievement to be killed in a video game. However, that's exactly what Mythic Entertainment did with Warhammer Online. This fantasy MMORPG based on the brilliant and best-selling tabletop game used a title system to let other players know of your actions and deeds. For example, my title would be Egg Daddy. You could get these titles by completing quests or taking down certain numbers of rare enemies, and more often than not, they would be brilliant and boastful names like Da Best Scrapper or Brute Cleaver. However, if you were either incredibly unlucky or incredibly unskilled, you might end up with the title of The Feckless, an air quotes reward only gifted to players who died to other gamers 100,000 times. That's some dedication to dying right there, and if you saw anyone sporting this, you'd probably laugh yourself to death as well. Seeing as the focus of this game was PvP, it's likely that a fair few people do actually have this title, but then again, whether you'd want to show this off is another question entirely. Number 7. At least you're good at something. Lara Croft and the Temple of Osiris When you take up the mantle of Lara Croft in a video game, you also inherit the dangers of her lifestyle, and trust me, there are a lot of them. From being nearly eaten alive by wolves, bears, goddamn dinosaurs, and a myriad of falls, slips, and trips, there's an incredible number of ways for Lara to meet her maker. The series has even poked fun at her dying a few times, with the infamous Hand of Midas turning her to gold, and of course, the player being able to make a swan dive 
dive into the pavement in pretty much every game. But when it comes to really twisting the knife, Lara Croft and the Temple of Osiris, well, definitely takes the cake. For if you happen to die the most out of your party when playing this outstanding puzzle platformer slash twin stick shooter, then at the end of the level you'll pop the at least you're good at something trophy. A brilliant way to immortalize your mistakes and for your friends to make fun of you. Cheers. Number 6. I did it by accident, I swear. Lollipop Chainsaw. We all knew that this was going to make the list, right? I mean, yes, you can indeed get an achievement to pop if you try to look up Juliet's skirt in Lollipop Chainsaw, displaying to the world that you're a dirty little grot goblin. And the fact that the title for this trophy is what many might try and use as a weak excuse makes it all the better. It's obviously not even the only game which lambasts the player for proving their perviness because in Near Automata Potato Patata, you can get a trophy for trying to see what's up 2B's skirt and another for blowing 9S's clothes off and making them run around in their pants for a bit. Azura's Wrath also pops a trophy for players who try to get a view of the valley in the spa sequence, and there are countless others. The reason that I detail them all here is because I bet we all know at least one person who has all of these achievements, and I bet you money that it's also you. Number 5 almost got it. Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock There's nothing worse than ballsing up an attempt right at the last hurdle, be it choking in a video game final round or mistiming that last platform jump and having to start again, the feeling of your heart racing and then suddenly sinking when you know you've got to do it all again is genuinely gutting. So of course, the last thing that you'd want is for a game to memorialize your defeat forever, right? Well, that's exactly what the third Guitar Hero game does with its almost got it trophy, which only pops if you got over 90 90% of the way through a song, only to fail. And trust me, it's happened to everyone. Whether your fingers have just completely given out or there's a late game solo stinger, there are multiple tracks on the in-game playlist that will absolutely have your life. However, unlike all of the other trophies on this list, this one might actually inspire you to head into the practice mode and perfect the section, motivating you through an otherwise painful experience. Number 4. Darkest Dungeon – We Return to Worms in the Earth If you're familiar with Darkest Dungeon, it's also likely that you've got the coroner on speed dial as this game will kill you in so many ways and so often that death itself almost loses its meaning. And of course, seeing as this is a game that never even slightly tries to be kind to you, most of the brutal ways that you can be killed come with an achievement to act as a kind of tally of spitefulness. Has one of your party starved to death? Here's a trophy. Has one of your max level members died? Well, don't worry, here's an achievement. Of course, some deaths are worse than others, and by far the most humiliating is to be killed by a lowly maggot enemy, which the game uses as a chance to rip on the player with the We Return to the Worms of the Earth trophy. It's one of the worst and most shameful ways to die in a game all about dying and shameful ways to do so. You have to laugh, right? But speaking of shame, Number 3. Shameful 2010 FIFA World Cup South Africa Trust me, you really, really don't want to have this achievement on your list, for not only is it worth a whopping zero Gs on the Xbox 360, but will mark you out as the worst type of online football player, one that quits matches early when you're losing. Boo, the crowd hates that, boo. If you happen to be this type of bad sport and quit out of five online matches when you're on the back foot, you'll earn the shameful achievement conveying to all those around you that it might not even be worth playing against you to begin with. Now, in some players' defenses, this might have happened thanks to connection issues, but it's still nice to see the saltiest of us being punished. Hell, it's a concept that's used in a ton of fighting games, a ton where quitters are named and shamed, or in the case of Mortal Kombat, absolutely obliterated, so to find it in a football game was actually a lovely moment. Number 2. What are the buttons? Golden Axe Golden Axe is a title that has endured so well because of how brilliantly simplistic its design was. As a side-scrolling brawler, all you had to do was smash the life out of anything on the same horizontal plane as you and make sure you had enough coins in your back pocket to make it through to the finish line. It's a game which has been ported to nearly every device imaginable and is instantly recognizable, which is probably why Sega wanted to poke fun at those arriving late to the party with the trophy of What Are The Buttons, which you can acquire by using your potions, which is the game's finite source of magic when there are no enemies on screen. It's the same feeling as calling in support by accident on Streets of Rage, as you will see your one get-out-of-jail-free move completely go up in smoke. Thankfully, this only happens on the Sega Mega Drive's classic edition that Sega released in 2010, so on all the other platforms, you're safe for now. And number 1. Try a Tutorial 
Lord of the Rings The Battle for Middle-earth 2 God, I wish this franchise had continued. For RTS fans, The Battle for Middle-earth franchise was a series that acted as a love letter to the source material and also gave fans the ability to lead huge fantasy forces into battle with one another. With a surprisingly lengthy campaign that offered both good and evil takes on the narrative and a robust multiplayer offering, the second game especially truly shone. Although, on closer inspection, that might not be the bright lights of Gondor in the distance, but actually the burning shame from red-faced players who'd netted the Try A Tutorial achievement. And this was rewarded to online goblins who had lost a match against a player more than 12 levels below them. Honestly, talk about rubbing in a defeat. It's embarrassing enough that the fresher player got one over on us, but now thanks to this, we've got an achievement on our record announcing that fact to everyone. Oh dear. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 video game achievements you don't want to get. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below, as well as any other choices you might have, because who knows, I might do a commenters edition further down the line. If you want to chat to me further about all things to do with video games and anything else, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice as my personal gaming channel, where I do tons of live streams and even a few board games here and there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. We detail today a lot about video game achievements that we didn't want on our personal records, things that we would rather stay hidden. But you know what, my friends? Sometimes there is a lot to be learned by looking at our mistakes and the things that we've done wrong in our lives and actually trying to learn from them. Burying things down deep is not a healthy way to live your life, even if it is something that is painful. And I don't want to cause anyone any undue stress, but trust me, speaking about your problems with friends, family, or professionals in the support industry by addressing mistakes with people who they've affected or even just with yourself can actually mean that you go forward and live a healthier and happier life in the long run. Nobody's perfect, so don't beat yourself up if you have made mistakes in the past. Move forward from them, do right by other people in the future, and forgive yourself, because you are a massive ledge. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.